Here's sound. Look at this thing. Yes. This thing's huge. Huge container thing. So let's go check out inside. Yeah, yeah. This is a freight farm at the Lotus House. I can tell you what. I'm going to show you what's inside here. Let's go take a look, Carol. Let's go. What a special place we're in right now. It's so incredible. Really very futuristic futuristic place right that's what i have to yeah. say look at this setup and yeah, we're in a very very special container yes and let's talk to the expert right now this is jackie hello, hello. jackie hi everyone hello hello to you thank you so much for having us let me tell you why this place is quite the setup tell us a little bit about where we're at right now and what we're doing Yes, so we are inside the greenery manufactured by Freight Farms right now uh, within Lotus House Women's Shelter in Miami. Um, so we're a shelter serving 500 women and children daily. This farm is used to grow our own produce and herbs for the kitchen. Um, so it's a hydroponic system. There's no dirt or soil whatsoever. Um, everything, what you're, the sound that's actually going right now is nutrients being put into the water tanks. Right. Um, and those nutrients and water will be delivered directly to the plants. Uh, so we're in a compact system. You can grow a lot in a small space, mm -hmm. completely organic, no pesticides, uh, same output 365 days a year. Yeah. That's incredible. Now, what are we growing here? Can we kind of walk through it and show everyone? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, um, so like I mentioned, everything we grow goes straight to our kitchen. Right. Um, every day at lunch and dinner, we have a salad bar for our guests. So, a lot of what we're growing is leafy greens and lettuce for that salad bar. Okay. Um, but we also do a lot of other fun stuff that we can use for cooking classes with our kids and everything. Um, so, this right here is calendula. This is an edible flower. Um, we use it, we'll cut the flower heads off, dry them in the oven, and then use them to make tea and have little tea parties with our kids. Um, we also do a lot of radishes, which are in the back here. So these are just, this one's really big, oh, just wow. about yeah. ready to be harvested. We'll probably harvest these next week. Okay. So. These have been growing for about seven weeks okay. since we planted the seeds. Whenever you harvest something, you just take the little grow plug off and then it's ready. Delicious. Oh, the radishes in here are so much better than any radish I've ever imagine. gotten from a supermarket. Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. they're fantastic. More lettuce here. Okay. I'll take you over to our herb wall. This here is our parsley. This one we've trimmed and come back again a few times, but once again, the parsley is a lot bigger than what you've probably grown in your own home. Um, same with the basil. The basil is my favorite. Oh, we yeah. get giant basil leaves here. Here's an example of this one. And this is like- Wow, look at that. Honestly, on the smaller end of what we really? can grow here. That's We've gotten basil leaves the size of your face. Wow. I can okay. I can send a picture. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, the basil is my favorite. We do a lot of pesto okay. that we make with the kids. Last week, our cooking class was bruschetta, okay. which was a little bit mature palate for the kids, but the adults enjoyed it for sure. Um, lots nice. of cilantro, dill. Oh, it smells great down here. Yeah, I, I know. That. I can smell the basil now. Yeah, yeah. We just started some sage. Um, these are more flowers that we just put in. More lettuce, some bok choy that we're getting started, which will get really, really big. Um, and we have some full-grown lettuce on the other side too that okay. I can show you. Smell the hill. That basil it smells incredible. Uh, so this is lettuce that's about four weeks old. Just what kind of lettuce? Regular lettuce? Um, it is a type of bib lettuce. Okay. Uh, it's called Seagoline is the variety. Okay. Um, this one, this is my favorite type. This is a oak leaf lettuce. It's okay. called Oscard. It has these nice frilly greens, kind of purplish reddish, really fresh flavor. Okay. So these are all ready. These are all going to be harvested this week. Okay. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. All of these panels that hang on the walls can be removed. So you just take it out like that. And then all of the work is done up front at this 
seedling table area. So right before you started filming, I was sanitizing the table and everything. Um, so our hydroponic farm is much more similar to working in like a kitchen than it would be to working on a normal farm. There's a lot of the clean as you go, a lot of food safety practices, a lot of sanitizing, always wear the gloves. From the very beginning, all of the seeds are planted in these little plugs. And these plugs are made of what? It's made out of coconut husk, okay. cocoa coir. So uh, this plug stays with the plant the entire time that it grows. Okay. So basically when we're harvesting, we're just pulling the entire plant out by that little plug. Just like are these that. Reusable? No, they're probably not reusable, right? Uh, they are compostable. Um, okay. There's ways of reusing them if you can like soak them and yeah. sanitize them, but we just compost them. We okay. actually take all of our compost to uh, different community gardens throughout Miami. Um, so they're not wasted per se. They are used to grow more food. Okay. Um, so you Good. take the plant out, just twist off that little plug along with any dead leaves, and then you have a head of lettuce that goes wow, straight to the kitchen. That. That's great. And just like that. So, so on average, how many do you serve a day of these? So we are harvesting about 300 heads of lettuce per week. 300 per week? Yes. And you can grow that many in a week? Yes. Wow. Yes. And we're actually in the process of ramping up. So okay. we're going to start growing about five or 600 really? per week. Really? Yep. That's incredible. Yep. Yeah. And that's <laughs> so, so it's composted. We just throw it in the compost. Okay. And then do the same thing over again. Okay. So, so with 300 plants per week, it's a lot of repetitive motions. You're doing yeah. the same thing hundreds of times over and over again. Well, it's um, great as you said that people who are at this or here at the Lotus House, they can also help participate in doing it, Yes, that, right? yes. So we have an after-school program for our children where they can learn how to do this. We okay. also have an outdoor garden that they play in a lot. Um, we're getting ready to plant that for the fall growing season. Um, but we also have a paid internship program for our adult women who live here at the shelter. Um, so that's a four-week part-time program. Okay. Um, the women will work 20 hours a week doing farm work, all of the, the basic stuff, the planting seeds, harvesting, transplanting, mm. um, taking it straight to our kitchen. So yeah, it's it's great. You know what, Hero, we should take some back to the studio and make a nice dish, huh? What do you say? Sure. Yes, well, we'll definitely right. give so you some stuff to take straight. home. Okay. You're just gonna reach your fingers in, okay. into the foam, okay. pull it out just like that. Okay. Gather any of those kind of wilted leaves mm -hmm. on the underside and then you just twist yeah, it all off, it just like that. So I will listen to podcasts while I work, okay. or music. Usually when I'm working in here with other people, we'll have right. jazz playing. It's very quiet, yeah, yeah. you have the music playing. Very therapeutic, I can very just imagine, Very therapeutic, right? yes. It's like, I used to can say one. Because of Mr. Speaker, you know, the music for the bass lines. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. I actually I have, right? yes, yeah, so that's something Freight Farms told us. I put this little sign up that there's actually been a lot of research done about how um, playing music to oh, yeah. fields of crops will affect their growth. Okay. Um, what kind of music? What's so what's, what's definitely more like calming and rhythmic things. So, so it's the sound waves coming from the music will stimulate uh, enzymes and hormones in the plants. Okay. So you nice. want the like rhythmic... Um, like orchestral music, acoustic, um, classical for the most part. Sounds like in Japan, the Kobe beef hero, beer and music too, right? They, 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 they do that too they, in Japan. Very cool. Kobe beef. Before we go to the next thing, always run my fingers in here, make sure there's nothing left behind. So there's all these panels have the foam is what kind of keeps the plant stabilized and held upright. And then inside each of those pieces of foam is this fabric, or what they call the wicking strip. So that fabric is what actually absorbs all of the water okay. and nutrients and gives it to the plant. Kind of provides a um, medium for the roots to attach to, all of that. And what is that that you're spraying? So yeah, so this is called Xeritol. Um, it's basically just concentrated hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Um, so this is the only cleaning agent of any kind that we use in the farm. It's certified organic. Um, it'll just kind of manage the, con the growth of any kind of bacteria or algae or fungi. Um, and it's safe for plants, so you can actually spray it directly on the plants. 
pull out any of the roots that start growing underneath. So the way that everything works, the water tank is on the floor in the back, pumps water up through these pipes. The water comes out of those things up there called the emitters. They run down the panels into the gutter and then the water goes from the gutter straight back into the tank. So it's a closed okay. loop system. Okay. 95% uh, less water than traditional agriculture. Wow, um, on incredible. average, five gallons of water a day, which is less than the average dishwasher. Right. Um, so very, very efficient. We just have to empty out the tanks, put in new water once a month. Okay. Other than that, we're using the same water every day. We're just going to plug the whole tray first. Okay. It's the first step. This is the part where we can involve all ages. Yeah. Two-year-olds can do this part. They practice their motor skills, putting little shapes and holes. For the lettuce, the way we plant it, we buy pelleted seeds. So basically they make the seeds bigger by putting a little clay coating around them. And then you can just use tweezers to put one seed in at a time. Oh, do you know how to one up for me, Jackie? Just like that. See how big that is. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty small. That's how the lettuce is. I just wanted to show you that. But we're okay. actually going to plant the sorrel. So these seeds are much, much tinier. Take a look Cannot at that. be done with tweezers. Wow. Look at that. So we have this little tool instead, which makes things it's go like way faster. A quarter of the size of a sesame seed. Yeah. Cool. So we'll just put them in this little tool, put on the second setting, and then we can just tap them in. How many would you put in in one? Um, I mean, as long as you see one go in, you can move to the next, but okay. they're probably getting about five and per be plug. Five from that? Yeah, so I'll show okay. you what it looks like once I finish this. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. This one's ready to be harvested. This is about, let's see, let's plant it on. September 2nd, uh -huh. so this is like six weeks. Okay, um, oh, look at that. But this is really nice. You can, do you want to try some? Yeah. Are you familiar with sorrel? Have you tried it before here? Have you had it before? It's very nice. So this is, um, sorrel is French for sour. Sour. So it has it. this nice, like, lemony taste to it. It's also just very pretty. Yeah. With what, the do red you veins. what do you use it for? Like, what do you we mix it in with our salads. Okay. Um, but you can also um, you can make pesto out of it. I've also heard of people using the sorrel plant um, for tea, mm. kind of with like hibiscus. Okay. So you get kind of that like tart, mm. tart refreshing iced tea. So really, the main three things that you're doing inside this farm is mm. planting seeds, transplanting the sprouts, and harvesting most of what the work is and then along with any maintenance and cleaning so we're just going to take those plugs out that's what the plant looks like about this size when it's ready to transplant okay. this is after three weeks you said this is planted on september, september 10th. 10th so about four weeks four weeks okay yeah and they'll be up there on the wall for another maybe three um or four weeks? basically with the basil we just kind of leave it there until it becomes so big it's unmanageable okay. yeah so probably up to like probably stay in the wall for like a month and a half a month and a half okay. six weeks yeah you don't see basil i mean this is as big as you don't know, normally see basil fresh mm -hmm. basil you know beautiful yep super simple so this was planted on september 10th by ariel I'm adding today's date to know when it was transplanted. And there we go. Harold, guess what we're taking with us? Take a look. I see the salt bag full of delicious yeah, things. Brothers, red house and basil. Oh yeah. Can't wait. See what you're gonna make with this hero, right? I'm still thinking. You're still thinking, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're 
you're back in the studio. Yes. Mm-hmm. What a great time over there at the Freight Farms Farms and also to Lotus House. Thank you so much to Jackie and the staff showing us around and really enlightening me. I've never seen that before. That setup is incredible. Mm-hmm. Self-sufficient farm anywhere in the world. And for more information, if you guys want to know, down in the description box. Okay, here's on. We have brought this stuff back from Freight Farms from Jackie. Let's mm-hmm. go through real quick and talk about what you're going to do. Yes, we have aretas here and a basil and uh, the radish mm-hmm. and edible flowers. So this is going to be the sauce. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this. We have yeah. mayo here. Mayonnaise, uh, pondo sauce, uh, sesame paste, sesame seeds, sugar, and uh, sesame oil. The first step, the sesame paste. This is a uh, three teaspoon. Okay. And one teaspoon of the uh, sugar. Okay. The next one is a uh, pond sauce. Okay. This is a uh, three teaspoon also. Okay. A six teaspoon the uh, mayonnaise. Okay. Then sesame seeds. This is uh, as much you want. Water is ready, so edamame. Edamame is ready. Keep it nice water. Sauce is ready, everything is ready, assembly together. All right, okay. Yo. This is uh, let us I'm wash already anyway, so I'm just gonna tear. Half of that. Radish, also half of this. Oh, I can smell that from here. The sesame seeds. Oh, yeah. So. Sesame smells so good, so good.
Freshest yep. vegetables in Miami. Mm. Hands down, no pesticides, no nothing. Also the first. Wow, look at that. Put some of the flowers here. Mm. Mm. It's so fresh, huh? No. Yep. Creamy. Very fresh and sweet. Well. Sesame. 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 Salad dressing, try it. I love it. Mm. Thank you so much to the people at Freight Farms, the whole staff, Jackie, Beatrice, the whole team. Yeah. And, uh, and also, it was an honor to spend time with the children over there in Lotus House. We hope to go back there soon. Yes. And we definitely hope that um, you enjoy the time that we spent with you. Till then, here, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much.